Hi everyone, my name is Carlos Corrado, pastor and founder of Christ Point Church Melbourne. Thank you and bless you for allowing us to come to the sanctuary of your homes to share God's Word with you. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are here to share the good news of salvation to everyone, beginning here at home in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, all the way to the ends of the world. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in heaven, and are a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. We at Christ Point Melbourne want to be able to help people connect to their destiny, and their destiny is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then we want to equip them to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the gospel of Jesus. The Word of God tells us this in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are living in unprecedented times around the world. We want to remind you that if you are living in the state of Victoria, Australia, you need to make sure that you are mindful that we are currently going through a quarantine lockdown due to spike on cases of COVID-19. We are currently going through a stage 4 state of disaster. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are a responsible church respectful of the law, but are also interested in making sure that you and everyone else is safe. So please, stay home, stay safe, stay informed, wear a mask, and above all, bring all your anxieties and worries to God. God tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We have ensured that during our streamings and recordings, all current safety precautions have been adhered to. So once again, thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for the blessings that you provide upon us on a daily basis. We thank you for allowing us to be able to hear your word through these podcasts. Allow us, Lord Jesus, to focus on you and only you, not only today, but every single day and every single moment of our lives. Bless us, Lord Jesus, beyond measure and fill us with your peace during this difficult time that we're all experiencing. We pray for those who are sick and struggling with their health and a lack thereof. You know them by name. We pray for those who have lost their employment due to the financial difficulties that the whole world is going through. We bring them before you, Father. Bless them and provide for them according to your perfect will. Give them the peace to know that you are in full control and that no matter what, Lord Jesus, you will be honored and glorified. And you will also provide for them in every aspect of their lives. Remind us all, Father, that to any situation, Jesus is the answer. We bring to you this morning the people in the state of Victoria, Australia, as we continue to go through the stage four lockdown, Father, due to the COVID-19. We pray for those who have lost their loved ones due to this pandemic here and abroad. We pray for the doctors, for the nurses, paramedics, who are helping those affected and who are at the front line. We pray for the Victoria Police and all of the emergency services, Father, as they are exposing themselves and putting their health and that of their families at risk. We pray for our Prime Minister, we pray for our Premier Daniel Andrews as he continues to lead the state of Victoria through these extremely difficult and unprecedented times in the increase of cases of coronavirus. Give him, Father, the wise counsel that he needs and deserves and protect him and his family. We pray for those who oppose him, Father. May they understand that he's just a man trying to do the best he can during these trying times. We pray for Australia and the rest of the world. We pray that you remain with us as we hear from the Holy Scriptures. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you use me this morning. May the Holy Spirit speak and not me. We pray this and a whole lot more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been called many names throughout my life, apart from Carlos, that is. Some good, some not so good, and some straight down horrible. Some have been true some not so truthful, and some, well, let's just say they almost nailed it. But if you ask me today, Carlos, who do you say you are? I could also tell you many things. Some good, some not so good, and some straight down horrible. 
some true, some not so truthful, and some, well, you may even say that I nailed it. So before I tell you who I am or who I say I am, I'm going to ask you, who do you say you are? And even before you answer this, I want to say the following. Yes, there will be people who put you down, people who do not have faith in you, people who do not like the way you do things because it is not the way they would or have done in their lives. People will look down on you because of your youth, the way you speak, the way you dress, and other things. We cannot be a carbon copy or should not be a carbon copy of other people. We are not and we should not be and we will not be clones. Most of us here that are listening perhaps are parents, but we all raise and teach our kids in different ways. However, as parents, we will always be preoccupied that our kids have and choose the best things in life. We always try and influence their lives for them to choose the best career paths, to have good friends and friendships, and hopefully find the right person for them to marry and form a family. God is also a parent. Our Heavenly Father, He wants us to invest our lives in the best things. And there is no better thing in this world for us to invest in like the investing time in helping others to find their way to Jesus Christ. To help them grow in the spiritual growth, maturity, and to see them also invest time to commit to promote and enhance the Kingdom of God here on earth. In order to do this, God requires people who are not afraid to believe in His Word. In other words, God blesses and uses the faithful, the ones who believe in Him, the ones who believe in His Word, the ones who are obedient to His calling, the ones who trust Him and His will for their lives, the ones who are willing to do anything for Him. Now, I don't know about you, but this indicates that the type of people God chooses are not just your typical run-of-the-mill type. They're not your average Joe Blow, your typical regular bloke or girl next door. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21 tells us the following. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. God's chosen people, you and I, are special. One of the things we at Christ Point Church Melbourne want to be known as is to be an inclusive church, not an exclusive one. A church that is visible, a professing one, a church where God is our foundation and we proclaim the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't want to be known as a social club or one where things are done underhandedly. One where conspiracies and conspirators plan out what they want for the church and not God's will. Having said all this, we at Christ Point want you, as a part of it, to believe that God has chosen you to be a part of His chosen people. God has chosen you to be a vessel of honor. He has sanctified you and He has created you to be useful for the Master Creator, and ready and prepared for every good work. God wants you to know that you have been chosen. You are part of His chosen people. The Lord wants holy people doing His work, those who are cleansed of wrong conduct as well as wrong doctrine. Paul says that any current dishonorable vessels, servants within his household, may become vessels of honor, specially prepared and purposely by God, if only they would purge themselves of wrong influence and earthly priorities. Now, God uses special people. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 tells us the following, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now faith always begins with an idea, a dream, a hope, a purpose, perhaps something that you long for. Nothing happens until you start thinking and dreaming of it. The author of Hebrews tells us that it is impossible to please God without faith, without hope, without dreams. Not only does faith bring insight and confidence that otherwise be unbelievable, the believer must have it to even please God. True faith is not just a passive belief that He exists, although this is essential. 
True faith is also actively seeking Him and His will. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 tells us the following, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Now, to seek the Lord means to approach Him through prayer and repentance. This carries with it the idea of discerning and emulating God's way of life and His character. The phrase, while He may be found, means that the opportunity for response is urgent. Someone once mentioned that a church grows to the vision of its pastor or pastors or leaders. How many churches have closed their doors or have come close to closing them due to the short vision of their leaders? A lot of churches were closed during this COVID-19 pandemic because they were not visionary, they were not ready to experience what we're experiencing. We were blessed to be able to have and use technology for the best or for the advantage that rather than being a church that would be in a building where people went and warmed up seats, we individually became the church, actively became it, and started sharing the goodness of salvation from our homes like we're doing this very moment. It is very sad to see churches which were once alive and growing, which have ceased to grow or have had an exodus of their flock. On the flip side, how many churches have been close to closing or gone through this exodus, and by the grace of God, faithfulness of their pastors and leaders have gone through change, willing to be relevant, willing to allow God to take them to the next step of the church's journey. So I dare you and I challenge you to dream with your pastors, to dream with your leaders, together with faith, together in faithfulness. Dream together, declare by faith together that these hopes and dreams become a reality in the name of Jesus Christ, in our Lord and Savior Jesus. Let me ask you this, what would you do for God? Really, look, let's look at yourself at this very moment where you are. What would you do for Him? Now, it is my prayer that you do not underestimate yourselves. Think big. A couple of years ago, I preached about going big for God. You can actually find that on our YouTube page. We as Christians need to dream big because God has big plans for you. Some of us perhaps over the last couple of months have been praying for things. But if our prayers were this big, our answers were this big. But if our prayers were this big, our answers were also this big as well. We at Christ Point Melbourne need to think big for our future. God wants us to be a church that is relevant, a church that is beyond our Sunday services, a church that is beyond our local community. Now, we need to outreach to them, of course, but we need to go beyond and think big. It is not about the numbers in the church, but about the spiritual maturity and the reaching out to the lost, reaching out to those who do not yet know of the good news of salvation, through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must also acknowledge that God uses people who are willing to take risks. The book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 to 30 tells us the following, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he had given five talents, to another two, and to another one one, to each according to his own ability and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also who received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. 
enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came out and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This parable teaches us the truth that Jesus' followers are duty-bound to work to expand his kingdom in his absence, no matter how long the wait for his return. This parable also teaches us that when we are faithful, when we have faith, we take risks. Take a look at the missionaries around the world. They dropped everything. They left everything and everyone to go out into the world and do God's work, to answer bravely to their calling. But not just to do this, but also to bear fruit through the risks and sacrifices. Now, if you're a believer who is willing to take risks for God, to risk your life for Christ, to risk your time for God, to risk your finances for God's kingdom here on earth, and f- fulfill your purpose in life to God's will, then you are the type of Christian, the type of believer that God uses. But remember, God wants you to be faithful and willing to trust Him fully when taking risks in order to bear fruit and grow. We need to live a Christian life taking risks. Seek more and more of Him because this is where we trust God more and more. We also need to acknowledge that God uses those willing to be used by Him. The difference between winners and losers is attitude. Churches nowadays are filled with people who get involved in every ministry, and this is great. The problem is, though, they get involved and they just sit there and warm up seats. Christ Point Melbourne is very blessed to have people like Peter and Tony, Roger Dale, our youth pastor Jonathan Condy, who are willing to step up to the plate to God's calling and share God's word and share the, the good news of salvation with everyone. They have said yes to the calling from God. They have stepped up to the plate and have shared God's word with everyone that hears it. However, the phrase is used by Satan, you can't do it. Others do it better than you. People are going to criticize you. People are going to mock you. People are going to attack you. You don't do it the way we do it. This is how we have always done it here. You're doing it wrong. You're not special. You're not important. You don't understand. You are, have a different way of thinking. These phrases have no strength here at Christ Point Melbourne. These phrases, no matter who says them, have no weight at Christ Point Church Melbourne. I love what the book of Colossians tells us in chapter 3, verse 23 onwards. And it says this, And whatever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Now, heartily means out of one soul, or from the core of one's being. Christians should do everything with all their hearts, actively motivated by their love for God and people. When the devil comes and attacks you with lies and attacks you with the, you can't do it. Others do it better than you. People are going to criticize you. People are going to mock you. People are going to attack you. You don't do it like me. This is not how we do it here. You're doing it wrong. You are not holy like me. And other words and phrases of discouragement. Don't worry because the source of the believer's passion is for God. For you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Passion is something true Christians discover as they discover God's gift within them. Christ Point Church Melbourne 
was born at a constant discouragement by men and women who were used by the devil to try and counter God's plans. But hey, God's plans and His will for His chosen people are perfect. And our passion as Christians must be for God. You and I serve our Lord Jesus Christ. We also need to acknowledge that God uses people who don't quit. The book of Luke chapter 9 verse 62 tells us the following. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. This encounter reflects the story of Elijah commissioning Elisha. And we find this in the first of Kings chapter 19 verse 19 to 21. And the word of God tells us this. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elijah left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Elisha too asked permission to return to his family and say goodbye to them before beginning his apprenticeship. His farewell to his family, however, expressed no reluctance about his new career. Instead, he slaughtered the oxen that once had plowed his fields and did not look back. One of my favorite quotes in Spanish is, Para atrás ni para agarrar impulso. For our Portuguese listeners is, De volta ao para pregar impulso. Which means, you do not go backwards, not even to catch momentum. Remember, Luke 9.62 says this, But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus, God does not want quitters. This verse demands perseverance in whatever we begin. How many times have you started something that you have not finished? I know I've started many things I, ha I have yet to finish. Fixing my garage was one of them. As a matter of fact, I actually fixed it. This is where I'm recording this. When we start things and do things for God, He expects us to finish them. God demands from us to be constant, to be firm, to be faithful, and to have determination. Great Christians all throughout history were ordinary people who had extraordinary determination. Successful churches are not those measured in the number of attendees but churches that are faithful in their spiritual growth and are ones that their members are people who never give up. They do not know what it means to give up. They are constant in their relationship with God through prayer, the study of His Word, and obedient to His calling. God does not want us to be nominal Christians. He wants us to be genuine Christians, not like those who just sit and warm up seats or expect others to do everything for them and just play church, or use the church to boost and feed their ego or fan club. We need to learn to be responsible people, people who serve God by really serving one another, honestly, transparently, and without personal agendas and or motives. We must strive to comply and answer to God's request and calling. He knows that we will make silly mistakes. However, in spite of that, He has chosen you and I. He expects us to have enough faith in Him to reach His objectives for our lives and for our church. Think about this. Do people who say that they are people of God quit their hopes, quit their dreams, quit their commandments, God's will because they are scared of failing? No. Or because they are too comfortable in the position they are in? or not continue to go forth because they no longer have any strength to continue. God is with us and wants to use us for His honor and glory and to increase His people, the church, our church, your church, and that is Christ Point Church, Melbourne. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1-7 to tells us the following. 
You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me, among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must first be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Christian ministry demands maturity and boldness. We have been saved by grace. We need to serve in grace. Disciples are made when new believers are taught the word, led by example, and trained to transfer the faith to others. Paul uses three metaphors for the Christian life, soldier, athlete, and farmer, all requiring hard work and difficult assignment. A war is underway, and God's people are meant to be involved as participants, not spectators. Now, for example, a soldier. A soldier must leave behind the comforts of home and family and his personal affairs to fully devote himself to his duty. An athlete submits to the rules in order to win. The Christian oftentimes has to sacrifice certain liberties to gain victory. This means discipline and training, hard work, very hard work. Now we have the farmer diligently works his crops because he knows that one day his labor will reap a harvest. The fruit of the Christian's labor is seen in the life of others. Now, I encourage you to watch last week's message where we unpack the parable of the wheat and weeds. So let me go back to the original question I posed before you at the beginning of our message. Who do you say you are? I pray this morning that your answer is, I am like a soldier. I am like an athlete. I am like a farmer. I am special. I am a child of God. I am a servant of God. I am faithful. I take risks for God. I want to be used by God. I don't give up for God because God is with me. That is my prayer for you this morning. I'm Carlos Corrado for Christ Point Church, Melbourne. God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, because you have chosen us, Lord Jesus, to be your children. We thank you, Father, because you came and you died upon that cross and resurrected on the third day for me to forgive my sins, Father. And I thank you for that. Lord, we pray that this week, as we go about our normal days and our normal chores, may you bless us, may you protect us, may you provide for us, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask that um, we may always be willing to serve you. May we always be willing to take risk, Lord Jesus. May we be willing, Lord Jesus, to be used by you to further your kingdom here on earth. Bless those who are unwell, those who are sick, Father. You know them by name. We could mention their names, Lord Jesus, but we don't have to because we know that you know them. We ask a special blessing for them, Father. For those who are jobless at the moment, Lord Jesus, around the world. May you provide for them employment opportunities, Father. But more importantly, Lord, Lord, that you provide for them and their families, not only the bread for the tables, Lord Jesus, but also that spiritual bre- bread, Lord Father, that only you can give. Father, once again, we thank you. May the Father's hand keep you from falling and stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give you the confidence and strength to follow. And the fire of the Holy Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God, today, tomorrow, and always. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. The preacher has finished his message. It is now for you to make a decision to come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart today, Repeat this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me. 
I now turn away from my sins and ask you to forgive me. I now invite you into my heart and life. I now trust you as Lord and Savior of my life, and I will follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. I encourage you to contact us through our contact details on our webpage, Facebook and YouTube, Christ Point Melbourne Online. If you'd like to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us and we will help you and equip you in your new journey in Christ. But also to go out into the world and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others who do not know him yet. God bless.